because there's a lot of misconceptions with a lot of people and myself. I think a lot of people might assume that I'm just maybe Hispanic and my husband just white, but that's not the case. As you know, on my channel, I've been talking about cognitive misers and cognitive misers. We are all cognitive misers. No one's exempt because no one's exempt from being a human and having a human brain. With that being said, a cognitive miser makes use of information very quickly. So we don't have enough time to gather information. And I noticed that some people are against psychology because it educates people about this sort of thing. For example, if you notice all the politicians, they were putting up signs outside. And it was very easy for people to be misled because people can simply choose to just, you know, select a candidate that they're very familiar with because they've seen the sign multiple times remember that's familiarity effect you don't really know anything about the candidate all you know is that you've seen the sign multiple times and you're making a very fast decision based off um, a very low reserve of cognitive resources because that's what people like politicians depend on if you want to use your brain maximally you should be aware of this with metacognition not only that but you should also apply what you've learned. What I learned in my professional studies as a grad student at Stony Brook University is theory to practice. There's lots of theories, and then you have to practice those theories. So I practice a lot of theories, and I practice a lot of my undergrad coursework in the class that I taught as an instructor. And yes, I was the primary instructor, and I administered the final grade, and I had a teaching assistant. I chose not to accept pay. I chose not to accept pay because the survey asked me in my email if I wanted pay, and I said no. Now, I took this class myself, and so I was familiar with the class, but they added a whole bunch of things to it. Luckily for me, I took a lot of psychology classes and had experience with the university, among other things, and experience as a student worker and as a teacher. So I was able to pull the class off with my experiences while being a graduate student. With that being said, I wanted to bring attention to this article on the Statesman That's about Stony Brook University. Okay, now people at Stony Brook University might have assumed that people are doing a very good job However, when I uploaded a video of my research, the school was given about 500 mil, I think. Now, when we look at this article, I've lived in Long Island for a very long time, and a lot of students are complaining. My husband lived in Long Island for a long time too, and students are complaining because of the pay. In Long Island, if you go, it's very expensive. Las Vegas, Nevada, where we live now, is also very expensive. It's equivalent, in my opinion, because... Well, I'll save that for another video. So, some of the TAs who are accepted get paid $30,000 a year, which is wonderful. However, the minimum... The living wage for Suffolk County for one adult per year should be fifty thousand dollars nine hundred and fifty thousand nine hundred forty thousand dollars a year okay and i'm telling you right now that poverty in suffolk county is listed on here as being twenty seven thousand three hundred dollars a year and the average grad student only makes twenty thousand dollars a year okay so while I was working as a grad student, I chose not to accept pay. I don't think the university should have allowed me not to get pay for teaching a course because students paid money for that course, and I had about 15 students, so each student paid at least $1,000. So I brought in at least $15,000 to Stony Brook University. Okay, and I was not paid a single cent. Minimum poverty wage for Suffolk for one person is twenty-seven thousand dollars three twenty-seven thousand three hundred dollars. Twenty-seven.